Hey, it's Joseph from Pixelwop here, and today we're going to be showing you how you can turn yourself into a skeleton, a bit like this, using AI and pose detection completely in the browser. So we've been getting into the spooky spirit at Pixelhop this October and we had a little mini experience which we'll link to in the description down here. And we used pose detection and TensorFlow.js to uh, turn your body and your webcam feed into a skeleton. And we thought it was super fun and actually a lot easier than you might expect. So we just wanted to make a little tutorial to show everyone else how we did it and hopefully you can have some fun learning it as well. So let's go. Okay, let's get started then. The first thing we're gonna do is use Vite to scaffold um, a new project for us. Um, so we can do that with the npm init command, eat at latest, and let's call the project the skeletonizer. <laughs> Say it weird as I spell it there. Um, and we're gonna use the template vanilla TS. So this is gonna set up a TypeScript project for us. Um, just plain TypeScript, no frameworks or anything like that. There we go. So let's CD into there. And then let's npm install. Excellent. And then let's open that up in VS Code so we can see what we're dealing with. Cool. Let's make that a bit bigger. So you can see it well. <clears throat> okay, so the first thing we are going to do is go through the sort of main steps that we're going to need to take here. So <clears throat> I'm just going to write some comments in the top of this um, main TS file. So the first thing we need to do is actually start the webcam and display it on the page. Um, so obviously without a webcam, there's not really gonna be anything to detect poses. So that's quite an obvious place to start. The second thing we need to be able to do is draw on top um, of the webcam feed. So by that, what I mean is when we detect these poses, we wanna be able to actually then draw the skeleton on top of the webcam feed. So we need a way to do that. Um, we're gonna be using canvas for that. The third thing is the pose estimation with uh, TensorFlow JS. So once we've got the webcam feed and a way to be able to draw on top of it, we're then gonna to wanna to actually try and detect the poses. Fourth thing is we're gonna do um, a sort of hello world um, version of drawing the skeleton. Um, by that, I mean just a very basic sort of line drawing to sort of prove that the pose detection is working. And once we know that's working, we're going to actually map the skeleton to the pose. So there's quite a few bits to get through here. So we're probably going to split this up into two or three videos, depending on how long it takes. But let's get going now with the first part, which is... Um, creating the uh, HTML to display the webcam. So if we move into the index HTML that's created for us here, we can delete this existing div that they've added for us, and then we can create a new video element. Um, we're gonna add a few attributes to this. So this video element is gonna be where our webcam feed is displayed on the page. So the first attribute we're gonna add is plays in, I always spell this wrong, plays in line. And what that does, it just tells the browser that we want the video to play where it is on the page, because by default on mobile, when a video plays, it will open up in full screen. So that's not what we want. The next attribute is auto play true. That just says when a video is available to this element, it should play automatically without the user needing to click a play button. And then we're going to set its width to 640 and its height to 480. And the reason we're doing that is because 
we want to limit the video size that we're working with because the larger the video, the more resource intensive the pose estimation gets. So by fixing it to this relatively small size, it will hopefully mean that it runs quicker. Um, so now that we've got that in here, we'll just save that file and then we will move into the main TS file and we can delete those bits. We'll leave the style import because that's going to be useful later and we can just get a reference to our video elements. We'll type it with TypeScript so we get nice autocomplete and then we'll select it here and then the only other thing we're going to do here is just going to add this exclamation mark on the end which is going to let TypeScript know that um, the video element does exist. If we get rid of that you'll see that the type here now is HTML video element or null and while that's kind of technically correct it's going to be really annoying later in our code we'd have to keep writing lots of conditionals to account for the fact it might not exist even though we know it's on the page so we'll just put this here for the moment. Cool so we've got that at the moment um, if we actually run this with npm run dev and then open it up there's not going to be a lot to see at the moment oh that's the wrong site Then we open it up, you'll see there's nothing there at the moment and that's because we haven't added anything to the video element, we haven't started the webcam or anything like that. So the next step is for us to initialize the camera. So we're going to create a few functions here. So first one we can call init camera. It's going to be an async function because we're going to have to await some bits and pieces. And basically to get a webcam feed you need to get something called a media stream. So let's do that now. Um, get user media. Okay, so when you call the get user media function, this is going to cause the permissions dialog to appear that asks whether you want to allow access to the webcam and what we're going to do is we're going to actually pass um, this options object in here with a few options that are going to customize the video that we're going to get back so we're going to create a video object and then we're going to add this facing mode attribute and we're going to set it to user and that basically says on a camera that's got multiple uh, sorry on a device that's got multiple cameras like a mobile phone um, by default we want to use the one that's facing the user so the selfie cam so that we can see them and then we're going to add a width constraint 640 and a height constraint 480 and now that's just saying ideally we want a video that's that size so remember in index html we put that there we kind of want one that matches it the browser doesn't actually always conform to this it depends on the browser but for this uh, demo this that'll be fine we don't have to account for that and then we're just going to add audio false because we don't care about the audio so we're going to have our stream at this point once we've got a stream to display it on the page you need to add it to the video element and you do that by assigning the video element source object the stream that we've been returned here so that should work now so we're just going to quickly create another function which is going to be used to sort of boot up the app and start everything. At the moment, it's just going to call this a knit camera function, but we'll add more to that later. And then we'll just call start down here. Cool. So now, there we go. You can see that the webcam um, has appeared. There's my face. I didn't have to accept permissions because I've already done this lots of times on local host so it's already accepted actually let's just see if i refresh it we're gonna get no 
Cool, that's great. So we've now got a webcam feed. Now there's one more thing that we're going to do here before we move on. And that is to account for the fact that when you add a stream to a video element, there is a slight delay before the video actually plays and is shown. And we basically want to wait for that to happen before we do anything else. Um, so what we're going to do is add some uh, an event listener to the onloaded metadata um, property of the video element. And we're going to return a promise in this function once that has um, happened. So let's do that now. So on video ready. Now this is just a placeholder variable that we're going to assign the resolver. It'll make more sense in a sec. Just type scripting it up there. Um, and then we're going to create a new promise. Um, like that. And then we're going to do resolve. And then in here, we're going to do on video ready equals to resolve. And then, so this now essentially is our resolver. Then we're going to add our callback function to the onloaded metadata property of the video. And all that's going to do is call the resolver basically and resolve. And then finally, at the end of this, we're going to return the video ready promise. So now that just means when we do a wait for the camera down here, we're actually going to be sure that after this is run, the video is initialized and playing. Just check we haven't broken anything. Cool. Yeah, there I am. So, what's the next step then? <clears throat> so, now as I mentioned before, we've kind of done, oops, where is it? We've done step one. The next bit is step two, which is to allow us to draw on top of the webcam. And as I mentioned, we're going to be using a canvas element for that. So if we go back into index HTML, I'm going to modify this a bit now. The first thing we're going to do is add a div around everything. Oops. And then the second thing we're going to do is add a new canvas element. And we're going to set its width and height again, just like the video, so it's the same size. Oops, oh, setting width twice there. Width squared. Like that. And then we're going to go and add some CSS. Um, we can delete this bit that's in here already. So it was a little fly in front of my face then. And we're going to style our container. We're going to make it position relative. Uh, we'll set its width and height again, just to be certain. And we're also going to style our canvas element. This is going to be position absolute, so we can put it over the top of our video. And then top, zero, left, zero, width, 100%, height, 100%. Great, and just to check this is working, let's just temporarily set a background color um, so we can hopefully see. Oops, I think I need to do, close the video tag actually. There we go. You can't actually do shorthand video tags like that, so. Um, needs the closing element and now you can see that the canvas is on top now let's get rid of that now so we want the canvas to be transparent okay cool so we've got canvas element now um, <clears throat> let's go back into main TS and get a reference to it so just like the video one using the vanilla DOM libraries, HTML canvas element, and oh, we'll do the same. 
there to make sure that it doesn't think it could be null. And then let's also get access to the canvas's rendering context here. So if you haven't used canvas much, you might not know, but you have to get something called the context to be able to draw anything. Um, and we can do that with the get context method. And we want the 2D one like that. And let's also say that this isn't going to be null. Just there we go. Cool. So we can probably check this is working now by um, just test that we can draw on top of the video by drawing a rectangle on the canvas. So we go fill rect, and we'll just put it in the top left for the moment, and we'll make it a hundred by hundred. And uh, if we just set the fill style to red, we should hopefully see, there we go, there's our little red square. So you can see now we can draw on top of the video, which is how we're gonna draw our skeleton later. So let's just undo this again for the moment. That's probably gonna be quite a good position to stop for the time being. We'll continue the next part in the next video. Um, so now that we're set up, with our webcam in the next video, we will begin the pose estimation with TensorFlow.js. So yeah, subscribe if you want to be notified when that's out and I'll see you there.